Gaming mice these days can be overladen with features, things like extra dials, buttons and switches that can make for a mouse that gets quite big, quite heavy, and it doesn't necessarily equate to a better gaming mouse. ROG then are thinking a little bit differently with their new mouse, the Pugio. And this mouse is pretty much all about simplicity while being able to accommodate both left and right handed users with its ambidextrous design. It's a mouse that costs $69.99 here in the UK and $89.99 over in the US. But is it too simple? Does it do enough? And ultimately, is it a good mouse for gaming? Well, to answer that question, as always, we will start by taking a look at the design of the mouse, which I have to say, it's definitely a small and lightweight affair here, because the whole thing weighs 103 grams, and the symmetrical body of the mouse definitely won't sort of tailor itself to really big hands that like a lot to hold. If you're the sort of person that wants to be doing a lot of flick shots or you've got smaller hands, you're going to get on with this. But if you're a die-hard fan of a larger mouse, then you should opt maybe for something else. Personally though, I have to say I really do like the design here. Not only have you got plenty of RGB with things like the illuminated Asus logo or ROG logo to be more specific, but you've also got the RGB underneath that acts as a sort of underglow. And this also has multiple RGB zones within this one zone, which means that if you want to create a sort of wavy color effect, it really does look great and it does stand out very nicely. On the top of the mouse, you've got the DPI toggle and you can, of course, predetermine what the steps are in software. You've got your middle mouse click with yet more RGB and then your left and right switches um, actually can be swapped out. You can change the switches for other Omron switches that come in the box and these are going to be weighted slightly differently, which means that not only is the longevity of the mouse going to be improved, but you can sort of tailor it to exactly the sort of weighty feel that you want from your left and right clicks. But elsewhere though, we do have to say that the real money business, if you like, of the mouse is the fact that both the left and right hand sides here are identical and it doesn't matter which hand you favour, you should be able to get on with this mouse very, very nicely. And in its default state, you have two buttons on each side, although a lot of people will probably think, well, if you're using your left hand or your right hand, won't the other sides be quite easy to miss hit and easily hit the buttons? To which the answer is definitely yes, and there's a few ways around this. You can either disable the button in software, or you can actually use a cover that comes in the box to change this to either be one button or to have no buttons at all. So you can have this as plain as you like or with as many buttons as you like. And overall, I think a lot of people will like this feature, but of course, those of you that want a load more buttons on their mouse, they're not going to magically appear, but it's nice to have the customizability. Moving to the underside of the mouse, this is where you'll find that sensor. And it is optical and it has a max DPI of 7200. And in practice, you're never really going to use 7200 DPI. There are mice out there with 16,000 on Corsair's Glaive. And yeah, you're really not gonna use that either. In practice though, I sort of tend to use around about the 2000 DPI, but everyone's different. But if you're sort of comparing this against other mice, uh, sort of number for number, higher number doesn't necessarily win here. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about the design of the mouse. But what about usage? What about performance? And what about value? Well, in terms of actually using the mouse, it took me quite a while to adjust just because the shape is quite different to what I'm used to. And because it's so small and lightweight, again, a lot of people might be put off by this. But if you're the sort of player that plays a lot of Counter-Strike Go, or like myself, a lot of Gears of War, pretty much any game that relies on flick shots, so being able to quickly turn around um, and hit the player that you're trying to hit, uh, but sort of being able to accurately know where the mouse cursor is going to go, relying on muscle memory, then this is actually a very good candidate for that, because Gears of War is a game that pretty much relies on blind firing the shotgun and quickly turning around the corner and before the other player can, and I have to say that this was actually a very good mouse for that. I personally would still maybe rather use something like Corsair's M65 Pro or the ROG Gladius 2 and things like Battlefield 1, games that rely more on precision and accuracy, so things where you can use the sniper button to lower the DPI on one of those two mice. That can be quite useful in those sorts of games. 
If you do want to customize the Peugeot in terms of performance or in terms of RGB lighting, then this is all done through the ROG Armory software, which is fairly easy to use. It's nowhere near as buggy as it used to, and it's probably this bit of software I would say is improving the best over the shortest period of time. Because Corsair and Logitech, realistically, I still prefer their software, I find it easier to use. But ROG software is much better than what Cooler Master have on offer. It's probably quite similar to Razer's software in terms of stability and ease of use. And you can change the lighting on the mouse to have some really cool effects. You can sync it up to your Asus motherboard or graphics card and other ROG peripherals, which is something that you can't do on competing bits of kit, at least at the time of filming. And of course you can customize the performance of the mouse as well, calibrate it to the surface you're using. All of these things that we pretty much expect um, at this sort of price point on any high-end mouse. So realistically, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the mouse. I have to say that if you're after this sort of design, I think ROG have executed it excellently. It fits very well in the hand once you've got used to it, and if you are someone that likes to perform a lot of flick shots, or is someone that just prefers a lightweight mouse or of course you want that ambidextrous design, then you're going to get on with this mouse very nicely indeed. A few sour points for me are the fact that you don't have adjustable weights, which does limit it for some people, and of course that cable is not removable and replaceable. But overall, it wins the top performer award, as while it's still a little bit on the expensive side, I can't really fault the performance at all. A massive thank you, of course, to you guys for watching and to ROG for sponsoring the channel and, of course, for supplying this review unit. Any questions, let me know down in the comments section below. Let me know what mouse you want to see me review next and subscribe for more mouse reviews. Massive thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.